morning, rain, rain, go away. Heavy rain causes flooding in the region. Coming up, we'll show you the heaviest hit areas. Blowing in the wind with a busy hurricane season expected, we'll have the details from this year's outlook. And supersonic speed, NASA's newest creation, designed to fly faster than the speed of sound, the jet that could change flight. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. With Nathan, Tanner, Emerson, Katie, and Ballant, live from the Ball State Weather Center. Good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. 44 degrees outside. You're looking live at the Scramble Light. Meanwhile, back inside the Ball State Weather Center, I'm Tanner Holbrook. I'm Emerson Lehman. And I'm Katie Parker. Joe Struess will be joining along with us in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining. Crazy week of weather. Certainly. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd say a roller coaster of a week. <laughs> we had some very interesting conditions. Yeah. And if you think the weather has been crazy, you're not alone. We've gone from four inches of snow last Sunday to thunderstorms on Tuesday, followed by snow flurries again on Wednesday. Certainly not unusual for spring at this time of year, but not the kind of weather we like to see. Yeah, that's Definitely. right. Take a look at this crazy video. There were flooded streets and parking lots Tuesday night. Nearly two and a half inches of rain fell, and we might not be out of the woods just yet. Weather forecaster Joe Strews is in for balance. He is at the weather wall breaking it down for us. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Hey, good morning, Katie. I'm well, and I'm even happier because we actually have a break in some of this wild weather. Seeing these showers that came through overnight, they were very light in nature. They pushed off into western Ohio, leaving us with sunny skies across the area this morning. Temperatures right now, 43 degrees in Indianapolis, 41 in Kokomo, 40 in Lafayette. So a cooler morning in store. You definitely want to grab a coat as you head out the door, but a bit of a relief from the even cooler temperatures we experienced yesterday. As we push through the day today, we do have some more rain chances back in the forecast. Two o'clock, we'll start seeing some light, very light rain pushing in from the northwest. This will increase in intensity and coverage by your evening commute tonight. So in short, just take it slow out there for your evening commute. Expect a minor delay or two due to a slick spot. I don't anticipate this being very heavy. I think this will be very light in terms of precipitation, but I think it could be enough to, again, lead to a, a, a brief slick spot or two. This precipitation begins to make a change over two snowflakes by the 9 o'clock hour tonight. This will increase the chances of seeing a slick spot, but I don't think we'll see anything major in terms of accumulations. I do think this model is kind of overplaying the potential for snowfall. So again today, 48 degrees here by one o'clock. We have mostly cloudy skies. Maybe a chance for again, maybe some just some light showers by your evening commute today. Tonight, we drop down all the way to 26 degrees, so a very cold night in store. Winds out of the northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, making it feel quite cold. For the weekend, we'll be at 40 degrees here. For Saturday, it'll be dry but cold. Sunday will be dry for most of the day before another system pushes in from the west. That system builds during the day on Sunday. It pushes in from eastern Illinois later in the day on Sunday night. This could lead to a few slick spots for your morning commute Monday and even some measurable snow on the ground as we move in to the midday on Monday. Seven day forecast, we're still st uh, feeling the wintry temperatures early in the week, 41 degrees here for Sunday, 46 for Monday. But finally guys, finally some relief in store from the wintry temperatures, 55 degrees here for Wednesday into the 60s by the end of next week. Send it back to you guys. Thank you, Joe. Moving on, storms ripped their way through the country this week. From here in Muncie down to Houston, wind and rain wreaked havoc. People are trying to put their lives back together after a tornado destroyed homes and buildings just south of Vandalia, Illinois. That area is about an hour east of St. Louis. The good news is that no one was hurt. The National Weather Service set out a damage survey team and determined that it was an F2 tornado. Experts are saying it was a skinny but powerful one. Severe storms in Ohio caused significant damage Tuesday. One of the hardest hit areas was Greene County, and that's where firefighters say the winds destroyed barns, tore off roofs, and downed power lines. No injuries were reported. However, the National Weather Service confirmed a tornado hit that area. Now moving down south, strong winds blew off the roof at the cafeteria at this Southern Kansas grade school. School is in session when the wind tore off a lunchroom roof at Havland Grade School in Kiowa County. Look at that uh, wind just ripping that off. School was evacuated and closed. No one in the cafeteria was hurt during the storm. School is expected to be back in session today. And in Houston, Texas, strong winds took down a large hangar at Hobby Airport this week when severe storms rolled through southeast Houston. No one inside the hangar was in it when it happened and no one was hurt. Police received a call a little after midnight to assist the fire department at the hangar owned by Jet Aviation. 
There were reportedly gust winds of 60 miles per hour at the airport. And staying with the severe storm trend, a new preliminary forecast suggests that this hurricane season could be as busy as last year's. Forecasters at Colorado State University say that we could see a slightly above average season. Seven of last year's storms became hurricanes, including three major hurricanes. Hurricane season lasts from June through November. Colorado State will update its outlook on May 31st. Coming up, our nation's capital is finally blooming. And we have some exciting space news to share with you. That's right after your weather now. Eight oh seven on your Friday morning. McKinley Avenue, you're looking at 44 degrees. Meanwhile, back inside the studio, cherry trees in the nation's capital are now expected to be in full bloom later this week. An earlier prediction said the bloom was expected between April 8th and 12th, but the National Park Service now says the peak will be from this Thursday through Sunday. The service says it's impossible to predict peak bloom more than 10 days in advance. The National Cherry Tree Festival is underway in Washington until April 15th. The cherry trees were given by Japan in 1912, and they're now a staple at the U.S. Capitol. Some beautiful sights there, Tanner. That's not quite the case in Japan. Mount Shinmoadaki in Japan erupted, spewing hot lava and ash. The explosive eruption warranted a level 3 alert, which restricts access to the mountain. Warnings have been issued that flying rocks and pyroplastic flow could emanate from the volcano, although the area is unpopulated. James Bond buffs might remember the volcano from the 1987 film You Only Live Twice. And some news we always love to take a look at here at CWX. Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope have identified the most distant star ever observed. It's called Icarus, and it's 9 billion light years from Earth. Fun fact, that means the light from the images captured by the telescope was emitted 9 billion years ago, and we here on Earth are just now seeing it for the first time. Icarus is so far away from our planet that it wasn't visible before. Astronomer, astronomers excuse me, are only able to see it now because the light was magnified by the gravitational, gravitational pull of a nearby galaxy cluster. And when you hear the word supersonic, you likely don't assume that, is to, that it is to be quiet, right? Well, for the first time in decades, NASA Aeronautics is moving forward with the construction of a piloted X-plane designed from scratch to fly faster than sound with the latest in quiet supersonic technologies. On Monday, NASA awarded a $247.5 million contract to Lockheed Martin to build the new plan and deliver it to NASA California Research Facility no later than 2021. This new New Plane's mission is to provide crucial data that could enable commercial supersonic passenger air travel over land in the near future. Time now for weather history, and I'd have to say it is quite fitting for the week we have had here in Indiana. On this day in 1927, tremendous rains all over the Mississippi River Valley region, along with melting snowfall from the winter, sent floodwaters raging south down the river. A levee in Dorina, Missouri, pushed a surge of flood water downstream towards the Mississippi Delta, causing more dams to bust along the river as it went along. Well, and that's pretty crazy. Crazy yeah. stuff there, as we've seen the White River here in Muncie I rose know. quite a bit. Not to that level, but still pretty, yeah. pretty fitting. And next in trending, find out how one American treasure extended its stay at a major league ballpark. Plus, we're breaking down the science behind carbonation. That's after your weather now.
You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. 44 degrees outside on your Friday morning. You're looking live at the future site of the College of Health. Meanwhile, back inside the Ball State Weather Center, time to take a look at our favorite segment, Trending. Yay, that's right, guys. And first up today at the season opener for a Mariners baseball game, everyone was suddenly taken by surprise. Ooh. I know, this is cool. A bald eagle was released to fly around the stadium during the national anthem, but it didn't oh, no. go as planned. Oh, I know, man. I know. Take a look at this. After the eagle flew across the stadium, it decided to land on pitcher James Paxton's shoulder. <laughs> Look at that. The Eagles first attempt to latch onto his shoulder was Isn't unsuccessful, the but the Eagle tried again and was able to, as you can see there, latch onto Paxton's jersey. Paxton remained calm and stood still until the Eagles handler took care of the Good situation. Good for him. Yeah. That would not have been, I would have been I would, running. I would have been, would have been out hotly. <laughs> been, like, Could you guys you, imagine me in that situation? But you know, it's, no, a, it's you America, been, No, I would have been distraught. It's, it's America's like, like symbol of freedom. Like, I know. You can't be upset about it, but it's kind of like, the geese, like on, the geese on Ball State's <laughs> yeah. campus. It just wants to jump right at you and chase you. It's, oh. they, they run this campus. They do, they really I'm serious. Do. But anyway, moving on, this past Friday was huge for new music releases and the drama that came yeah. along with it. The weekend's new album, My Dear Melancholy, is allegedly directed towards ex-girlfriend Selena Gomez. Uh -oh. Did you guys hear this juicy drama? drama? No, not at all. Yes, I saw all over Twitter. In the opening song, Call Out My Name, the weekend states his feelings about past relationships. He talks about still wanting his significant other back and being angry that she has moved on so fast. Fans are, are waiting to hear if Gomez will comment on the popular new album. Well, I hope she doesn't, just so more drama isn't started, you know? <laughs> I don't like that's drama. Never, that's I don't never like how confrontation. It works. I really don't. That's never how it works in Hollywood. There's always, <laughs> I know, there's, there's, there's always, always drama. drama. There's always drama. Well, and there's drama on the links this weekend as it's the Masters, and oh. Joe has a look at the Masters forecast for the golf fans out there. That's right. This looks to be a forecast that the golfers will be able to score with. Uh, hopefully will lead to some Sunday drama that Emerson was talking about over there. Master Sunday, always good. Let's see what the forecast looks like. 79 degrees there today, sunny skies. A little bit windy though, so you know, golfers are going to have to try to take advantage. Those trying to make the cut today could be a little bit difficult out there. Moving day on Saturday, looks like rain. It's 75 degrees, winds out of the south, so not ideal golfing conditions for sure. And then Sunday looks nicer, you know, uh, we'll see mostly cloudy conditions, 63 degrees, so a little bit cooler. Hopefully there's no uh, playoff after the 18th, or I should say the 72nd hole on Sunday because there is some chance for some rain to move into the region. Rain for us though has pushed out over the last few hours. We saw some light showers over our area this morning. Really didn't impact us too much. They were very light in nature, a lot even not even making it all the way to the ground. Today we wake up, it's sunny out there. We're at 44 degrees, winds out of the west at 12 miles per hour, making it feel like we're sitting in the upper 30s. So you head out the door this morning, you're definitely going to want that heavier coat. Uh, it still feels like another wintry morning out across central Indiana. Today we warm up to 49 degrees in Indianapolis. We'll be in the upper 40s here in Muncie. Notice out down to the south, 53 degrees in Bloomington. So starting to flirt with spring a little bit. We won't totally feel the warmth till we get to the end of next week. Let's time out the rain for you here today. We'll see some rain pushing in from the northwest around 1 o'clock today. Areas like Lafayette, you'll start to be impacted by these rain showers. By 4 o'clock, you can see this large swath of rain showing up here on our high-res model. Uh, this could lead to some slick spots for your evening commute tonight. I think this model is a little bit aggressive in how much rain will fall. I think that while there will be precipitation falling, which could lead to a few slick spots for your evening commute, I don't think it's going to be a washout or anything too, too serious out there. As we push through the evening hours, here's 6 o'clock, still seeing some rain along the I-70 corridor. This continues to dip south, but as the atmosphere continues to saturate, we actually see a, and saturate and cool, I should say, we see a changeover to snow showers around. So maybe some light snowflakes around tonight. Again, I don't expect any accumulations out of this. We'll just be precaution as you go out tonight because you could have a slick spot or two. Winds at 50, 10 to 20 miles per hour out there tonight, dropping temperatures down to 26 degrees. Again, maybe a flurry or two around. Tomorrow looks to be a better day to start the weekend. 40 degrees, it'll be dry, but cold out there will be pretty dry throughout the day. Winds will subside a bit, but that northerly wind will bring those cooler temperatures into the region. For Sunday, will be dry through much of the day. Temperatures still hanging around that 40 degree mark. The next system of note moves in later in the day on Sunday. This could bring some measurable snow to the region. Let's time that out here. This shield of snow starts pushing in from Illinois. 
early in the day on Sunday, pushing all the way through the day on Sunday through eastern Illinois. This will be in our region by about midnight on Monday night. This could lead to some slick roads Monday morning and even some measurable snow. So just be cautious as you head out the door Monday morning. This system could affect your morning travel. Seven day forecast, we're still wintry over the next few days. 40 degrees here for Saturday, 46 here for Monday. So we warm up a little bit, 44 for Wednesday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, finally, we see a break. 55 degrees for Tuesday into the 60s by the middle part of next week. Send it back to you guys. All right, Joe, thank you. Having a birthday coming up, we'll have some free activities to make your special day more fun. Plus, you won't want to miss what Liz is breaking down for us today. That's after your weather now. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I will be making some mocktails. So we already have some ginger ale in here and we're going to be adding some Minute Maid orange juice. You can do pulp or no pulp. Orange juice is great at this time of year because you got colds coming up. You want that mm. strong immune system. Very and true. then Sarah's going to pour the grenadine syrup yes. in there. Yeah. And you can make, make it, it as fancy as you want to. Um, so while we're stirring this up, you know, if you're having brunch with some friends and you want to make your individual cups look super pretty, there's a way that you can do that by layering your drink. And how you can do that is looking at the nutrition facts um, and seeing how much sugar is in each um, like liquid that you're pouring into your drinks. And that's kind of the science behind a layered mocktail. So that's kind of cool. Well, another thing we have coming up on the show today is the breaking down of carbonation. Yeah. So ginger ale is carbonated, and so you will learn more about that with Liz. So how, are so you, how have you been celebrating this week, Sarah? Well, I actually did have my birthday yesterday. Yeah, you did? Yeah. yeah. And we're celebrating. Happy birthday. Ah! Happy birthday. Wow. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yay. Happy birthday show, show the fans. To oh, yes. You. Show them the cake. Yay, look how cute that is. <laughs> this, this is a really cute cake. Happy birthday. This says happy, happy birthday, birthey. Sarah, from yeah, Cardinal that's me. WX. Aw, awesome. oh, thanks, guys. We all guys. love Sarah so best. much. Thanks. I did. You guys are great. Cheers to Sarah. Cheers to yes, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah Big cheers to get Sarah. A drink. <laughs> <laughs> the mocktail is super the mocktail pretty. Mocktail. Wow. It does taste really good, guys. Mocktails and cake. It looks good. Mocktails and cake. That's, that's the best way to start. That's yeah, that's, that's the best way to start Good your morning. Friday. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, and for really most is. of Ball oh. State's gymnastics team, the season ended with the MAC championship, but one freshman is competing in a national competition tomorrow. Cardinal Weather's Michelle Kaufman has the story. After a successful season that included two 9.9 .9 scores on floor, Tia Kiaku is preparing to compete this weekend. She is an all-around gymnast for Ball State, but floor is her favorite event. You can express yourself more. You have music, you can dance. It's unlike all the other ones. You can have fun, actually, and you, the nerves don't get to you as much. Floor is also the only event where gymnasts can perform to music, and Kyaku's routine has a family connection. Actually, my brother created my floor music, the end of it, and then, because, like, for college, that's, like, the trademark for college gymnastics is to have, like, a statement routine, so that's what I wanted to do when I came here. She has one goal in mind. I know that I'm, like, a freshman. It's my first time going, but my goal is to win. Like, I know my abilities, and my teammates have helped me 
realize how good I am. Gymnastics coach Joanna Salim said having Tia compete will also help the team. I think it's important for them to be able to see a teammate, especially somebody that they're competing with every day. They're watching them train every day. They know that, you know, as great as Tia is, she isn't this extraordinary, crazy difference between what they're doing. And to be able to see, oh, well, I've got a teammate doing it. It's something that we can do. We can set that standard and then be able to have more of them um, expecting to be able to get there. On Tuesday, Indiana had its first shot at seeing severe weather with impacts right here in our community. That's right. This morning, weather forecasters Joe Struess and Liz, along with Emerson, are going to break down the misconceptions and answer questions about severe weather. Good morning, guys. All right. Good morning, everyone. We're here with forecasters Joe Struess and Liz Sepchek, and we had a very roller coaster of a week, you guys. It was very, um, you know, we had some severe thunderstorms with really warm temperatures, and then temperatures just plummeting to snow flurries again. Is that strange for this time of year? Well, this time of year, it's, it's early April. You know, we had the spring, the changeover to spring a couple weeks ago, so it's been taking people kind of off guard because temperatures have been so cold. This time of year, you get a large shift in the air masses. You get a lot of cold air coming in from Canada, a lot of warm air coming in from the Gulf, and this is the prime season for severe thunderstorms. So while uh, maybe took some people off guard after some snow Sunday night, <laughs> Um, we're right within severe weather season, and this is right when we'd expect for us to start seeing these thunderstorms start to develop. Yeah, I think a lot of times people forget that spring is a transitional season, and it's not always ideally how we want to transition, right. but it's Mother Nature. She'll well, do what we, she wants. Well, and when we have those 70 degree days in January or February, it kind of gets people all excited, and then their hopes kind of go down again once that, those, that cold weather moves through those cold fronts. Now, the Great Lakes have uh, something to do with that as well, correct, in the Midwest region? Uh, the Great Lakes, in terms of lake effect snow, for sure, um, what, what happens is you get warming in the spring. So think about the winter, all the Great Lakes freeze over, okay? We, get, we set the all-time record in Indianapolis in February for the highest temperature ever recorded in February. It was 77 degrees back in the middle of February, ever, the warmest February day ever. Um, when you get that kind of warming, the Great Lakes up to our north tend to melt. As, the, as the, the lakes warm and you still get very cold air masses to pass over, you get lake-induced instability and you can get lake effect snow showers to form. So that's why we get the snow streamers that come through the state, drop some snow on us, and then the next day they're gone by the, next, by the time we wake up the next morning and we've got thunderstorms. It's just it's a very rapidly changing climate. We're right within the, the battle zone, so to speak. So. Uh, you and know. and though this is uh, behavior from the weather that can cause a lot of flooding, as we've yes. seen here in Muncie, we've seen throughout the throughout the region. Um, in terms of that, you know, any flood tips for our viewers if they you know see standing water things along that nature? Uh, one of our favorite quotes to say at WCRD is "Turn around, don't drown." Yes, an up to an inch of water could move a full vehicle. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that just that little bit that we see could have such a big impact, but it really can. It's one of the biggest hazards. Yeah, I mean, for our viewers that came back into the area, what was it, Tuesday night, um, we were looking at the potential for maybe some stronger thunderstorms to come through, but we had a big flooding situation around Muncie. And, you know, time after time, I just watched cars drive through three or four inches of water. It's not, it's not going to take that, it doesn't take that much to stop your car there, and you're stuck. And you know the number one thing that causes loss of life in thunderstorms? It's not tornadoes, it's not damaging winds, it's not hail. It's flooding. Uh, people just are not smart, they get their cars underwater, it's, it's very dangerous. So, do you have anything to add to that? No, that it's extremely dangerous. Even regions outside of the United States, the, you never know what's exactly in these floodwaters that could be bringing in extra hazards as well. Yeah, and especially with those hazards, like you mentioned, a uh, severe thunderstorm, for a severe thunderstorm to become warned, it doesn't take into account the amount of rain that falls. Okay, so you're dealing with uh, large hail over an inch and winds over 58 miles per hour. Those are the winds we all consider, or the, the criteria we all consider to be severe, but when you're dealing with um, flooding, it's something people take for granted for sure. So the best thing you can do at home is grab a no weather radio, it alerts you when there are flooding alerts going on. Here's the other thing though, today in the south we have a, another severe thunderstorm risk. It could be kind of nasty down there. Liz is going to break that down at the wall for us in National Weather here in just a second. All right guys, good information. Now Liz, what do you have in National Weather for us? We're off to a pretty chilly start for April, especially across the nation. A lot of blues being affected right here on our map just because of the 
still moving out from overnight tonight. In Denver, sitting at 37 degrees currently. Up in Seattle, sitting at 50, just a tad bit warmer. And then in Los Angeles, you're sitting at 57. Currently on radar, a lot of that being reflected. There are some frost warnings in effect for our southern states that aren't necessarily used to these colder temperatures that we are seeing. But later today, temperatures are warming up. We'll be getting to 83 degrees in Dallas. Billings only sitting at 24 for the rest of the day, though. But a lot of this is going to have this warm air pushing through the south, mixing in with all of this cold air from the north, allowing for some severe weather to affect our southeastern states. Metropolitan areas like Shrivelport and Jacksonville could also be seeing an enhanced risk issued by the SPC, which could, could entail large hailstones and damaging winds associated with that. So that is something we are keeping an eye on for the rest of the day today. But as we start to progress on our precision cast, we're seeing most of the system really start to develop later on in the night. It's going to impact throughout the night tonight. So that is something to take into precaution. But up to the Pacific Northwest, taking a different note, a lot of wet conditions coming up, moistening a lot of states as we start to progress through the weekend as well. And overall, just bringing in a lot of moisture, impacting other systems as well. All right, Liz, and thank coming, you so much. Liz, thank you. Coming up, we will have a look at your weather now. on this Friday morning and now Cardinal Weather's Liz Sefcek, busy this morning, is going to be at the whiteboard breaking down the science behind carbonation. Liz, good morning. Good morning, guys. Following those delicious mocktails that we just saw, we're talking about the science behind carbonation, all of those bubbly particles that we see in favorite sodas and pops that are associated with that. But when we're looking at carbon, carbonation, Carbon is the biggest factor, more specifically, carbon dioxide. That's what produces all of these little bubbles that we see in those favorite drinks. Those kind of bring in a slight acidic taste with that, which is different for the palate, which kind of brings in and ties in those tastes that feel just a little bit addicted if you've ever felt addicted to a certain soda. So through these, what we're going to be looking at are three main characteristics, one being cold temperatures. If you're putting a soda in the refrigerator instead of in just sitting out for room temperature, there's going to be a lot more carbon, carbonation associated with that. In addition, pressure is going to be a huge factor, whether that's naturally happening through natural springs or artificially happening when it comes to making those sodas and pops in factories, and also surface contact. If you're having a glass of pop and you see these bubbles start to appear on the rim of it, that's mostly due to these bubbles wanting to be able to be in contact with the rim, outer rim, allowing for that surface contact to happen. And just like our favorite cartoon, Garfield, if you're starting to shake up those sodas, you're seeing a lot of pressure added more and more and more, allowing for this carbonation to bubble up and fizz. That's the science behind carbonation. Now I'll turn it back over to the desk. All right, Liz, thank you. That puts me in the mood for a soda pop. I want that this morning. <laughs> anyway, the power of Mother Nature was in full display in Door County, Wisconsin over the, this week. This pileup was caused by a phenomenon known as ice shoves. Ice pushed up against this cottage in Door County on Saturday, breaking through the walls and windows within a few hours. Large chunks of ice broke into a bedroom. No one was injured. Ice shoves are caused by wind pushing ice from lakes or oceans onto the shore. Ice then rolls in similar 
in similar like a tsunami, often damaging structures on its path. The phenomenon is commonly known for this time of year in parts of Wisconsin. And Joe has one final look at the weather. Joe, good morning. What's up guys? After a bit of a chance for some precipitation today, we'll be cold and dry for Saturday. We'll have dry conditions here on Sunday before another chance of precipitation moves into the forecast for Sunday. For the golfers down in Augusta at the Master, better conditions today, 79 degrees for golf, but unfortunately moving day looks pretty sloppy out there. We'll see some rain around. A better day for Sunday. Seven day forecast here, again, will be cold through the next few days, 41 degrees for Sunday, 46 for Monday. Finally, some relief in sight though, 55 degrees for Wednesday, 62 for Thursday, 65 for Friday. is all for us this morning on Waking Up with Cardinal Weather. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back here next week. In the meantime, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great rest of your Friday.